Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here for another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to resolve the Windows 10 or Windows 11 blue screen error that the error message reads unmountable boot volume when you are booting up your computer. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to resolve it without too much of a hassle and we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So we're going to start off assuming that you're unable to boot into the Windows operating system. So there is a utility called the Windows Media Creation Tool. If you go on Google, you want to look it up, or you can go in the description of this video. There will be a link right underneath. It'll say something along the lines of link to media creation utility, something like that, and it'll be a Microsoft domain. You want to go ahead and download that, and then you will have the option to install the ISO file to either USB or DVD, as long as it's big enough. I believe it's about four gigabytes is the requirement, so no CD-ROMs for this. But again, you want to have a flash drive or DVD that's big enough, you want to go ahead and burn into that. Um, you'll have an option whether you want to upgrade this computer or install it on another device, so you would select install on another device. Basically just installing it onto a USB or DVD. And then you would go ahead back to the computer you're having the issue with. So again, this would require two different computers to coordinate this. So you could do this, you know, if you have a second home computer, borrow a friend's computer, go to the library. You guys have a lot of options. You're pretty smart. So don't hound me too much if you're unable to get a second computer because you clearly can. There are different ways to do it. But anyway, you want to go ahead and access the boot menu on your computer. So this will vary by your hardware manufacturer. It could be the escape key, F2, F8, F12 I've even seen that lets you see your boot menu order. So you want to get to something that looks like this. So basically when your computer is booting up, you would tap that key repeatedly. You can go on Google and search up your specific computer manufacturer as well as version number if you're unsure. And just type boot menu number after that just so you can get it all in one shot. So it's all included and then it should probably pop something up right on Google that pertains to your situation. But anyway, in the boot menu here, we're going to go ahead and use our arrow keys, and we're going to go down to CD-ROM drive. Even though it is a DVD, um, it would, in my case, show up as a CD-ROM, but it is a DVD, in fact. And I've already inserted it into my optical drive on my computer. Again, you would do that before you boot up your computer, and then you would try and boot from it here. So, again, you have to have it all in your computer in order to boot from it, which I think makes sense. It's pretty intuitive. So anyway, in the boot menu here, I'm going to go select my CD-ROM drive. I'm going to press any key to boot from it. So if you see this Windows icon, it's a good sign. It means you've done everything correct up to this point. There's also videos on my channel as well on how to actually create the Windows 10 installation media. So feel free to go ahead and look into that. I'll probably actually include a link in the description of the video for that as well. Okay, so it says Windows Setup here. So everything would be a normal Windows Setup just by selecting Next here. But instead of selecting Install Now, you're going to select Repair Your Computer at the bottom left corner of the screen. Now, underneath Choose an Option, you have quite a few options to choose from once we get into it. But first thing we're going to do is select Troubleshoot, Reset Your PC, or see Advanced Options. First thing I would actually recommend would be to do the System Restore option and see if there's any Restore Points created on your computer. So we're going to go ahead and select that, and then we're going to go ahead and select our target operating system. So restore system files and settings. System restore can help fix problems that may be making your computer run slowly or stop responding. System restore does not affect any of your documents, pictures, or other personal data. Recently installed program files and drivers might be uninstalled. Go ahead and select next. And now you see we do have a restore point on our computer. I'm going to go ahead and select next again. And if you do not, have no fear, once we're done the System Restore method here, we're going to go into other methods here too. But we're going to go ahead and do the method that I recommend trying first. And in order to do that, it says confirm your restore point. And the date, you can go ahead and select the most recent restore point. It shouldn't really matter too much. Most of your do files and documents should be protected. However, some stuff might be removed that goes back to this date. So just keep that in mind. And Again, if you have changed your Windows password recently, we recommend you create a password reset disk. So you might have to just take note of your old password if you just recently changed your password. Make sure you know it before you reset anything. 
and there are ways to reset your password even if you forgot and I actually have made videos on that as well so you feel free to look that up on my channel too but anyway system restore needs to restart your computer to apply these changes before you proceed save any open files and close all programs go ahead and select finish once started system restore cannot be interrupted you want to continue System Restore cannot be undone after it has completed. If System Restore is being run in safe mode or from the System Recovery Options menu, it cannot be undone. Select Yes. This will take a few minutes to run, so please be patient. Okay, so it says that it has completed successfully. The system has been restored to our specified date. Your documents have not been affected. Click Restart to restart the computer. So go ahead and select Restart. Okay, so it says System Restore completed successfully. The system has been restored too. Your documents have not been affected. Go ahead and select Close, and that should be about it. So if you're still having a problem, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward back to that boot screen that we started with. So you just go ahead and restart your computer. So just go back to that utility we were just on. Just boot up your computer back to it. And I'm just going to fast forward back to that boot screen that we started this video on. Okay, so you can see we're back on the boot menu here. I'm going to go down again to my CD-ROM drive. might be slowly different in your case. However, there shouldn't be too many options here to go select. should be pretty obvious for most of you guys. I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to press any key to boot from the DVD. I'm just going to give it a moment here, just like last time. So under Windows Setup, I'm going to select Next. I'm going to go back to Repair Your Computer. I'm going to select Troubleshoot. Underneath Advanced Options, I'm going to go select Start or Prepare this time. Fix problems that keep Windows from loading. And I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to go ahead and select My Operating System. 
and just give this a couple minutes here just like the last fix we went through and I'll be right back Okay, so you can see your PC did not start correctly. Press restart to restart your PC. You can also try advanced options, try other advanced options to repair your PC. So it appears that that method did not resolve the issue for us. However, you, you could try restarting, which would just be a normal restart. Otherwise, we're going to go back into advanced options here. So just another way of accessing what we already render, basically. So anyway, under you choose an option, we're going to go ahead and select troubleshoot again. We're going to select advanced options. So I guess this would be method number three here we're going to go over. And honestly, I would suggest for option number three, going to uninstalling updates, remove recently installed quality or feature updates from Windows. So go ahead and select that. So feature updates, the second option that's currently on this version of Windows Troubleshoot, basically these are the big updates that come out twice a year, generally. And the uninstall latest quality update, those are more every day, every week, patch Tuesday sort of updates, maybe a virus definition update, that kind of thing. So actually this could be two different steps in one. I'd actually first recommend trying to uninstall the latest quality update and then if that didn't work I would try rolling back to the latest feature update. So I guess this would be method three and then method four respectfully. So I'd recommend going ahead and trying that. It's not really too much to show at that point. So go ahead and select it and it would just restart your computer. This would take some time, especially the latest feature update, because you know how big those are. They can take an hour or two to download. So just keep that in mind. But I'd recommend trying those options in the order I suggested and see if that works. And the other thing too, you can try the system image recovery option, which if you have a saved CD or DVD of a backup, you're welcome to do that. It's more common if you had an older version of Windows, like the Windows 7 backup and recovery option. Not as common, most of you guys probably don't actually have that here, but I will just go ahead and type it in, select continue. Actually, I think I don't even have a password on here. And anyway, you can see there's no system image on this computer. And if you had a backup DVD or some other external hard drive that you can connect to, you could do that through here and then just access it. I don't actually think we're connected to our DVD anymore since we went right through Windows troubleshoot. So you probably could remove that DVD that was in our computer at this point if you're using this method and just pop in the correct, the recovery CD or DVD at this point. Like I said, when I think when we had the sort of repair fail, it just put us back into the Windows troubleshoot, because there's two different troubleshoots. There's Windows troubleshoot, and then there's that DVD troubleshoot that we went through. So I think there's maybe a little bit of confusion there. just want to put that out there. So we're not even on the DVD at the moment. But anyway, for this method, you wouldn't want to be on the DVD. We want to be, want to be reading off of it, because you would need to actually select an image backup at this point. Unless you had multiple optical drives, which I guess you could, but anyway, I'm going to select cancel because I do not have one in my case, but you're welcome to. And then there's also additional options here, so we go underneath advanced options. I'm not going to reset our computer at this point. I'm going to try something else here, which is a little bit more involved, but I was kind of waiting to see how the other methods work for everybody before we jump into another one. And this should have some good amount of success too. But I just want to caution that this is a little bit more involved here. But anyway, we are, should be okay. So this method, method number five, I'm going to call it, is going to start on this advanced options page. And we're going to select command prompt. Use the command prompt for advanced troubleshooting. So go ahead and select that.
So at this point you want to type the letter C on your keyboard which or whatever your main hard drive would be labeled as and then colon and then hit N on your keyboard. Once you're done doing that type DIR and then hit enter again on your keyboard. And the way to make sure that you're underneath the correct directory is when you see something that says program files, program files, users, windows, and perfect logs. Now depending on what your drive label might be, it might not be your C drive, so just try different letters until you get the correct drive. In most cases it should be the C drive, however. So now once you've found the correct drive, you want to type CD on your keyboard, and then space, and then forward slash. Windows, forward slash again, system 32, another forward slash, and then you want to do config, or actually I should say backslash, but I believe a forward slash would work as well. Once you're done typing this in, you want to hit enter on your keyboard. And at this point you want to type in MD and then space backup. If you've done something like this in the past, you might have a duplicate um, file here. So just make sure you might put a one on the end of here or two or something to distinguish it from a previous backup because you don't want to overwrite another one you might have already saved. So once you're done typing that in, you're going to hit enter on your keyboard again. So at this point, now you're going to type in copy space, now you can do a little star, dot, and then another star, another space, and now you're going to type backup, and then hit enter on your keyboard again. Now what you want to do is type CD, space, reg, reg, and then type back, B-A-C-K, and then hit enter on your keyboard. Now you want to type DIR again, all lowercase, doesn't really matter, but I'm going to do all lowercase and then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard again. Now, please note in my case, I have all zeros next to these entries. Um, if it says zero next to your entries, then this will not work for you if you continue forward, so stop here. Um, I would recommend going through System Restore or start or prepare and trying to resolve Windows through that. However, due to my computer's environment, I only have zeros here. But if you guys have values that are not equal to zero, there should be really long strings of numbers next to all of these settings on the left side. So just look in here. Um, it's, if you see all zeros, then like I said, go through System Restore. If not, if you guys do have numbers, it should be several million number place values and quite a few of these. Instead, you're going to type in copy space star dot star another space and then two dots back to back and then hit N on your keyboard. When it says overwrite type the letter A on your keyboard and then hit enter and then at this point you can type exit and before I hit enter on my keyboard like I said before um, most of you guys should not have zeros here but if you do this method will not work for you I'm just gonna make that exceptionally clear so anyway we have exit typed in here so I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard to confirm that man Okay, so now back underneath choose an option. Assuming you were able to go ahead and continue and exit to Windows 10, I'd recommend trying that. And if that still did not work, you can go back into troubleshooting here and select that. And then where it says reset your PC, let you choose to keep or remove your personal files and then reinstall as Windows, go ahead and select that. And now you'd have the option to go ahead and keep your files, which would remove apps and settings, but you keep your personal files or remove everything, which would be a fresh reset. I recommend saving that second option for last. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and select keep my files here and let this continue here. And we're going to do a local reinstall, reinstall Windows from this device. It's going to ask, are you ready to reset this device? This cannot be undone. Make sure your device is plugged in. This may take a while. Resetting will change back 
settings to their default, keep your personal files, reinstall Windows from this device, and remove all apps and programs that didn't come with this PC. Please note that even though it says it will keep personal files, there is no guarantee that there are even personal files left on your computer. They might already be corrupted or this utility might not work entirely as designed. So just proceed at your own risk basically. And we're going to go ahead and select reset and just give it some time here to run. So I believe this is method number seven or so. So again, if one of the other ones hasn't worked, we're going to finish up with this method. And if this one doesn't work, you can do a full, complete reset like I just showed you guys. There were two options back there. So we're going to go ahead and let this run for a couple minutes. Okay, there we go guys, you see Windows has been installed, we're back up and running. So as always, thank you guys for watching, do hope that I was able to help you out, and I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.